y'all again. I uh, know we don't have much time, so open up to y'all's questions. Glenn, when uh, we talked to Brock Bowers at Media Days, he was asked who was the hardest guy to block, and he talked about Chaz Chambliss. How far have you seen him come just in this offseason getting ready for fall camp? Well, let's start with your original question that you asked Brock. I think when you talk about somebody being hard to block, a lot of that is relative to strain. And Chaz uh, strains both, I mean, in terms of his competitive nature and like, his physical willingness to battle with people. And so that, that makes him a hard guy to block by nature. Uh, he, the guy works extremely hard in all areas, whether it's walkthroughs, meetings, on the field and individual drills. He's one of the most common people to stay after practice to work on his own. And so naturally when you work like that and you focus on your process, you grow. And I think he buys into that and, and does it every day. So, I mean, he has continued to progress and we're really pleased with him. Yeah, Coach. I hear Coach Smart talk all the time about preparing for each individual offense because they're so uniquely different in this conference. I'm curious how you go about your process of, you know, intaking the information, breaking down a football team, and, and how you go about finding your game plan. So I think you start, first of all, with when you go into fall camp right now, we, we try to challenge the guys with a lot of volume, and you try to anticipate problems that are going to arise in the future because right now what we do have is time to – get reps, to teach, to correct. And so I think you need to be really forward thinking in terms of what issues are going to be presented in the future. And you build a library of options to pick from so that when you get to a game plan, uh, you kind of know where you I always, I always compare it to being in a kitchen as a chef, right? And if you go in there and you have a fully stocked pantry, fully stocked fridge, you have all your seasonings and spices, you can make about whatever dish you want, depending on who you're cooking for, right? So each offense that you play, Hey, you need to cook a little different, right? And hey, when we're when we're focusing on us, that's like preparing food for your wife and kids at home. Like, hey, Bryson better get some chicken nuggets, right? That's what he needs. And so that that's a hey, that's our identity. Hey, what are, what are we good at? And then the extra fluff in there. I need we need to build a, a library so that we can pick from it, and that makes the game planning process easier because we know what we have and what we can do do well. Glenn, since we last saw you at the uh, national championship game, you had a chance to interview up with, with the Eagles. Uh, I wonder what was appealing about uh, you know that process to, to consider that, and uh, how much are you able to keep in touch with uh, you know all those former players up up there that uh, you coached on this defense? You try to the best of your ability to keep in touch with all your former players. Um, I have a unique vantage point being here going on eight years now, where uh, the relationships are consistent because of where. I am. I'm still at the place where they played. Obviously, the guys that played in my room, I think I have the best opportunity to stay in touch with them because we spent a majority of our time together. And then that, you know, that extends to everybody else on the defense. Uh, mostly this time of year, it's text message related because it's everybody. They're short on time. We're short on time. But Keely sent me a text the other day and, and was just a little back and forth about things that are going on with him. So. You know, that, that's, you try to do the best job you can to keep in touch with everybody there. In terms of that process with the Eagles, I think when, you, when you're successful, opportunities come for everybody. Opportunities come for players. Um, opportunities come for coaches. And I was, you know, it was an honor to be considered and to be reached out to by them. And, and um, you know, I appreciate it. And that's, that's about all that I went through that process. And I'm glad to be where I am. Yeah, Coach, with Jalen Walker, he's a guy who can obviously do a lot. How do you go about helping him grow the most at inside linebacker, knowing he's going to be asked to do a variety of different things with this defense? Yeah, you do not start them in a small box, especially not a guy going into year two. So we want to, we want to challenge him to be as versatile as possible, to go back and forth between being an edge rusher on our third down packages and playing inside linebacker on first, second down. And that's a, probably more than you guys realize. We've done that with a lot of guys over the years. Maybe they didn't end up being in that role on game day. Um, he was able to do that for us last year. And we want to find out how much each guy in the defense can do right now. And so we're challenging day to day. Hey, you have to be able to play inside linebacker on first, second down. 
even challenging them to do it some on third down because there's other guys that are good edge rushers as well and figuring out who the best 11 are. Glenn, you touched on uh, opportunities that you had, not just this offseason, but other offseasons. I mean, ultimately, uh, why you've been working for Kirby in some capacity for a long time now. Uh, what has kept you from wanting to just see what's on the other side at this point? Do you envision that eventually? You know, obviously, these opportunities uh, have been really good. So I always define, there's, there's a lot of ways to define quality of life, right? And one, you're responsible as a husband and a father to do what's best for your family and their well-being. And my family's extremely happy here. Um, two, quality of life in this profession is generally tied to winning. And I've been very fortunate between both being here and at Alabama that we've been extremely successful. So I have a high expectation and standard for what I want to achieve in my career. Uh, beyond that, I mean, you. I think a lot of men, women, people in general, like you could, people always talk about the grass isn't always greener. And when you look at it, there's been a lot of people who have been extremely happy and they tried to become happier and they ended up miserable. So, you know, I'm extremely happy here. I love the people I work with. I love the players that I get to coach and I love where I live. So um, there's a lot of reasons why to still be at Georgia. Kirby told us in the spring about a meeting he had with Jamon and Smile, um, you know, kind of challenging them to get back to what they were this past offseason when they were, you know, trying to step into bigger roles. How have you seen them emerge and, and continue to grow going into their second year as starters? So this going back to this spring, uniquely for those two guys, they had a lot of success early. And so a lot of times people go in and they're going into their third year and guys are having to compete and scratch and claw uh, to create their role or to earn respect. And those guys were fortunate enough and they earned it to do that at an earlier age. So there was a brief lull there. Uh, what I'll say from that point forward, they, they accepted that challenge and have elevated their game. Uh, I've been incredibly pleased with Pop through this beginning of camp. His leadership, how vocal he is, his overall effort and approach to practice stands out day to day. He's been extremely consistent, and we need that from him. Um, he wants to be significantly better than he was last year, and he's practicing like that's what he wants to do. Smile, um, obviously you all know from not being out there, he's been limited, but he's working extremely hard. And You talk to Ron Corson, and he says, this guy's doing every single thing that he's being asked to do which is hard to do in treatment. Sometimes that means you're getting treatment three times a day, whatever that is, and he's, he's doing a great job. And right now that's all we can ask of him. And, um, you know, the training staff will decide when his time is to return, but he's doing what he needs to do, like a, like a vet in that way. This is a program that has established a standard of playing elite defense, like even when players leave, you keep that going. As a coach, how do you, how do you stay on top of that to keep that standard going? Well, the thing about a, a standard is – that once you set it, you have to uphold it every single day. And so when we go out to practice today, we're not worried about the results that are going to come when we get to play our opponents this fall. We're worried about how can we uphold the standard today. We constantly measure things to hold guys accountable in terms of our results as a team defense in the prior day's practice. We show it to them when we fell short, okay, then we have to be accountable to that and demand that we do better the next day. We, we chart things in terms of uh, individual measures of, of things that, that, that really matter to playing great defense. You know, the effort that you play with, you have to out-hustle people ultimately to play defense. The physicality you play with, you have to out-hit people to play defense at a high level. And your competitive nature that we were talking about earlier, you have to out-compete people. So the number one way we're going to uphold the standard, because schemes change year to year based on who your best 11 players are, best 15 players are, whatever it is. We're going to measure, did we out-hit people? Did we out-hustle people? And did we out-compete people? And if we do that, you're successful playing defense at just about any level of football. Coach, if you could explain how fun for you and the players the uh, ILB Olympics were, and just how did that idea come about? It's become an uh, extremely fun tradition, especially now that my daughter Whitley's two now. Uh, Bryson will turn four in September. So I remember being a coach's kid, and my dad's players were my heroes. 
And he spent so much time with them that when I got to see them, they, they seemed larger than life, even though he was never at a program like Georgia where some of these guys really are larger than life and will go on to do unbelievable things. And so it's, it's, become ex it's been great on my end to get to see my kids interact with all of our players. Not only that, Juwan Taylor, who you know, play, obviously played linebacker here, and his kids were there. Um, the Blaine Miller is also with support staff with the linebackers. So it's, it's a chance for all of us to come together outside of football and compete and relax and, and break bread together and do all that. And it came about because when we had that hiatus during COVID where we were apart from each other, you know, there's a lost piece of connection. Our meetings were on Zoom. And I wanted to do something different before, once they, once they had cleared us to come back to campus and then they had decided that we were going to play football, I wanted to do something unique to create an opportunity for us to be together because there had been so much time apart and remind each other that we're all in it together and we're in a family now that we're here because we spend, you know, we spend every day of the year together for the most part with a few exceptions. And hopefully the relationship stays for the rest of our lives. So. I don't want our only experiences together to be on the football field or in a meeting room. So that's kind of how it came about. And uh, it's, it's taken on a life of its own. And um, technically, my wife was undefeated at the end. We just called it because the guys had, had obligations the next day. So it might have taken them a while to beat her. Glenn, this is kind of a technical question. You were talking about Jalen Walker. You know, he can be a third down guy. We talk about Javon Bullard. Maybe he'll be nickelback, safety. Talk about getting your best 11, best 50. How much of defensive football these days is finding guys that can play multiple positions and having just different packages rather than slotting in this guy is an outside linebacker, this guy is an inside linebacker, this guy is X, or, or has it not changed that much or has it changed a lot over the years? Well, you have to have a home base. Now, a home base for a guy like Javon Bullard could be this, the safeties and the stars, the nickels, a lot of times they're together if the whole secondary isn't together in terms of drill work, in terms of meeting rooms, things of that nature. Obviously, there's, there's skills that are different there than there are corner. And so you have to have a home base, and you have to become strong in your home base first and then grow what you can do otherwise. It is a big piece because when we talk about the question about game planning over here, how, how, can, you, how can you fit um, our defense to what we need to do for that opponent? You want to have guys that you don't feel uh, – can only do one thing because now not only do you as a staff feel like, okay, we, we have to maybe protect this guy or we have to only use him in this way, that other team knows that as well. And so in terms of opponents attacking us, the more versatile our players are, they can't necessarily say, well, we're only going to get this front to this formation or this coverage or this player's only going to line up at a nickel um, or is only going to line up at a safety corner. Hey, are they playing left and right corners or are they playing field and boundary? There's a big difference, right? Or are they just getting up and playing ball based on what, where they are and they're interchangeable? Because a lot of, a lot of football is matchups. So if we can change the matchups by having versatile players, it's extremely helpful. And for their long-term career development, uh, for after college, if they're fortunate enough to be able to do that, they don't necessarily have a say in what position they play at the next level. So the more we can train and prepare our guys to be able to do multiple things, gives them a chance to have longevity in their football career. Natris Patrick played inside linebacker with me and was able to have two years active roster in the NFL as an outside linebacker for the Rams. He was able to cross-train. He played third down in, in some packages for us, and then he was able to do that at the next level. So we're also helping their careers long-term if we teach them how to do more than one thing and become a well-rounded football player. Coach over here. You started with your install talking about volume. I'm curious how that volume might be changed with like early enrollees. You have a ton of early enrollees nowadays versus like a guy who might get here in the summer or even like a transfer, though I know you haven't had one of those in a little while. When, when, you, when you look at it, there's so many more opportunities that are afforded by the rules in terms of meetings when you're not in actual practice time. So it's really important to create a schedule of, okay, here's our allotted time for meetings in football in this part of the year, how can we almost, we give an introduction, an introduction to scheme. Then when you get into practice time, when you obviously get a lot more meeting time, you get reps, you get walkthroughs, okay, now we're gonna ramp it up. Then when you start over in the summer, it's back to basics with the time allotted. 
and then it ramps up for fall camp. So you can actually teach the defense in some form or fashion four times a year, and we try to we try to cycle it that way, and it helps their acclimation process. And you know, we had, I mean, over 20 mid years on the team this year. So when they get think about that, by the time they hit the first game, they may have learned whether it's offense or defense the system in some form or fashion four different times. Now they only get to rep it in spring ball and in fall camp. But I think that helps. And it's really important to be a good teacher as a coach. I, I, I always want to say, hey, whoever their best teacher was, this applies to every coach on our staff, whoever their best teacher was in school, OK, why was that teacher successful in reaching them? Probably they weren't stale in how they presented. They engaged the room. Um, there was interaction. and so. You can get guys acclimated in terms of scheme, add volume if you take pride in being a teacher and not just go put a playbook sheet on the board and say, here's your assignment. Hey, it's your job to know it. Uh, I'm, it's our job to teach it. And so that's kind of how we've approached it, and I think it's been successful for us. Uh, and you know, it's helped guys like hey, Malachi and Michael last year were able to be successful. I think part of that was, one, they're talented. Two, they worked really hard to acclimate themselves, and three, uh, we created a plan to, to teach, and they took advantage of it. Hey, two more questions. Um, Kirby was talking about way back in the spring and even into this, the, how you know young you guys are at outside linebacker. I wanted to kind of focus on the three guys you brought in mid-year, Damon Wilson, Sam Mpemba, um, and uh, Gabe Harris. How far have they come, and, and how close are they to you know kind of helping you out, carving out a role for themselves? So today is practice six. I'm starting with the, the, the second question. So today is practice six. It's the first official day in full pads, even though we've been in shells, we've been in shoulder pads. You know, the game changes when, when pads come on. And it changed a, changed a little bit when we went from spiders to shells. And it'll change more today. Uh, consistency decides who's able to help us. And so being on practice six, everybody, no matter how experienced they are, still has a long way to go to the consistency we expect in the standard. Those guys flash. Those guys have ability. They have um, traits, whether it's in pass rush or in run defense, um, and they and they are embracing, you know, what we're asking of them. But practice six, I couldn't have told you who was going to contribute for sure on practice six of last year. We still have two scrimmages, you know, really 25 practices before before the first game. About 18 of those are camp style, so we're a third of the way. I'd be better able to answer that question um, after those two scrimmages and and those 18 practices. Coach, talking about your inside uh, linebackers, you brought in three freshmen, very highly touted guys. What can you tell us about them, aside from whether or not they're going to contribute? But like as persons, I mean, we don't know them. We don't get to see them. What did, what, why did you recruit them? I prioritize outside of athletic ability, because obviously each of those guys, um, or maybe I shouldn't say obviously. I mean, just in my opinion, they are they're very talented in terms of their athleticism, in terms of uh, being versatile in their skill set. They're not limited into doing one thing. That's what attracted me to them when I watched the tape. Um, speed is a premium. Ability to play in space is a premium. Um, what really made me want to sign those individuals and why I'm happy they're here is they're extremely competitive, extremely hardworking. They love football. They're good people. You check those four in addition to your, in addition to your skill set, those are guys who want to coach. And that's exactly who they've been. They've been competitive, hardworking. They love football, extremely attentive. They want to learn. And they're great people. So that's, that's what I can tell you all about them. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Awesome.